Unfortunately, I have other bad news. The season that I was there, 2010 to 2011, we converted from uh, construction to operations and maintenance in both the elevated station and the detector array. Unfortunately, when they first fired it up, that was when we had the earthquakes in Christchurch, New Zealand. There's two incidental shots before they were able to target it correctly. This is an earthquake generating device as well. This is the weapons of war that we have to deal with now and what Raytheon's hiding. What's up, Sky Watchers? What is up indeed? Let's talk about this anomaly that appears to originate from around Antarctica and moving north along the western coast of Africa. I've heard it all from Godzilla, asteroids, pole shift, and even motherships. Let's take a look at a more likely scenario. Weather warfare, climate engineering, and even atmospheric experiments. Now, I couldn't say for sure, but based on everything I've showed you this year, it seems like weather warfare is the most likely candidate. If you remember, back to December, I showed you how they were using ionospheric heaters up in Norway to split the polar vortex. And now, they're in the South Pole. If you haven't seen that video on the polar vortex, go check it out on my YouTube page. I'll put a link in the comments. What they're doing is creating a virtual antenna in the sky that radiates extremely low frequency signals that travel worldwide and can be heard in the deepest depths of our oceans. This virtual antenna is called a ionospheric Alvin resonator, IAR, it is using the ionosphere as an antenna. So it could be considered a geophysical weapon. Heating the ionosphere with high frequency radio waves will produce alphan waves and magnetosonic waves, MS waves, sanding oscillations of the geomagnetic field lines which behave as strings with ends fixed in the ionosphere. So when you move it up here, a standing wave can occur along these magnetic field lines and compressive magnetohydrodynamic waves, magnetosonic waves, come straight through. Now, magnetosonic are the lowest of low frequencies there are. We're talking zero to like one hertz. Right here, you're gonna see spectrum for harp ULF start experiment, ambient noise. There's the Schumann resonance right there. And then 60 hertz, you can see now harp has been turned on. Do you see the difference? This was our ionosphere, naturally occurring, nothing happened. Ambient noise, they call it. Now they turned harp on. Spectrum at harp ULF start, noise increase by 10 to 20 decibels between 0.7 to 10 hertz. And our Schumann resonance, our heartbeat of our planet has now disappeared. It's gone. And there's now a spike at 60 hertz, which I don't know if you know this, but happens to be the same tone that's in your wall, in your electricity, that drives you batshit crazy. From 2010 to 2011, you were a tradesman and firefighter in the South Pole. Antarctica is a contractor for Raytheon. You spent 366 continuous days at the South Pole. You were Raytheon and experience with UFOs. Yes. Um, you're a whistleblower for the benefit of humanity. Why are you blowing the whistle now? What I'm are you blowing the whistle because I'm obliged to. I don't know anybody that's walked a similar path to me in life, so it's necessary information that gets out there. I wish that I could be relieved of the task, but until I can find someone that can properly handle this information, I have to be on point for it. Roger that. I was also tasked with being a firefighter. I was a lead on the firefighting team, and because of that dual role capacity, I physically held the key that opened every single door in the facility. I had complete access to every compartment they manufactured. That was a, a rare position to be in. What, is, what are you blowing the whistle on? that there are technologies at the South Pole Station that people can't even consider that exist on this planet. Like what? Directed energy weapon systems is something that people need to get into their vocabulary fast. The array embedded in the ice is one kilometer by one kilometer by one kilometer. It is the world's largest telescope. And now because we have proven that it can transmit, it's the world's largest directed energy weapon system. It is responsible for the earthquakes in Christchurch, New Zealand in 2011 on the front end of the year. How do you know for a fact that that was responsible for that? Because I was present and I have gone over this with the pertinent people, but I will not be releasing their names. Okay. We are looking for patterns of water displacement.
So until next time, stay aware, be prepared, and keep looking up. <laughs>